Okay, good morning. Saturday, 10th of November. Yeah, and today we just pick up a SIM card here yes. in the capital city, yeah, in this yeah. town. Phnom Penh. Yeah, Phnom Penh. We just uh, pick up a SIM card, yes. Yeah, a normal ritual, new country, new SIM card is the first thing we need to do. The easiest place so far to pick up a SIM card was Vietnam, the most confusing was India. But uh, this was okay. It took about 10 minutes, and we have a SIM card. So now we have internet again. Yeah. What's the plan now? The plan is now we're going to uh, the same restaurant that yesterday evening and we will eat breakfast. Well, probably go and see uh, some museums and uh, some of the temples here. That's the plan today. Okay, we'll see you around in the city. Another booming tourist destination we can see. There's many tourist coaches here. Okay, back at our favorite coffee shop, Backyard Cafe. Well, this is a very healthy start to the day. Jamie's not too impressed, but uh, let's hope it tastes okay. <laughs> some spinach and uh, egg omelette and uh, lemongrass tea, some kind of fancy pancakes. And, uh, yeah, looks okay. You good? Very delicious. Okay, so we just moved hotel. Is this way. Yeah, we just moved around the corner. It's a place we wanted to stay yesterday, but they were booked. And there we are now. Yeah, now we just find the guest house now. And this is the room of the guest house. So, this is where we're staying here in Phnom Penh. It's not a turbo, turbo but it's okay to Okay, so today we're here in Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia. So uh, we'll go and have a look around and see what there is to see here. So uh, Cambodia was once a country with a great empire, as we will see in maybe in a few days' time when we get to Angkor Wat. But, uh, also a country that's sandwiched in between two other powerful countries of Thailand and Vietnam. Been at war with both Vietnam and Thailand, but also befriended by both of them and uh, vice versa <laughs> during different times in its history. It was, also a, it was also a French colony until 1953 when it claimed its independence. They were tired of paying uh, high taxes to, to France for all their rubber production. They used to produce a lot of rubber here. And then, uh, yeah, then there was many years where not much was happening until uh, 1975 when things took on a terrible turn here in Cambodia. So this is where we are here. This is the Genocide Museum. It's a former prison known as S21 not far from the uh, center of Phnom Penh where we're staying. And then we're going to do a tour around here and uh, see what there is to learn here. So the Khmer Rouge they ruled over Cambodia from 75 until 79. It was first when Vietnam finally uh, attacked uh, Cambodia in 79 they put a stop to his uh, regime. He then uh, fled to Thailand and uh, still continued to commit uh, guerrilla warfare against Cambodia. It was only in 1998 when he finally passed away that uh, peace finally came back to Cambodia. So the prison here, S21, it used to be a, actually a school and then under the Pol Pot regime this was a secret prison. People would enter here but they would never leave. The rooms, uh, the rooms here is where they would be interrogated. We'll go and have a look inside. I said before, S21, this used to be a school. Um, it's one of the most secret of all the prisons in Cambodia. There's 200 other prisons like this in Cambodia. So this used to be a playing equipment or apparatus for children, which was later reused as a torture. So this, this is uh, Paul Pot, he was the leader of the Communistic uh, party. It's called uh, Kampuchea. Kampuchea is the name of uh, Cambodia. Kampuchea Democratic Leaders. And in the beginning, it wasn't difficult to get uh, support for the new regime. They were tired of being bombed by uh, USA. And more bombs fell here from Cambodia from USA than in the Second World War. It's known as the Secret War. Not many people knew about it back then. But in uh, reality, that was only the start of the, the problems. The real tragedy was about to begin.
So the whole idea was to return uh, the people to work in the fields, to return society to agriculture. So they were forced to work extremely long hours, and of course these were people from the cities that had no idea how to uh, produce rice. But uh, Paul Potty wanted uh, every hectare of land to produce three tons of rice, which was completely impossible. So many people died, it was uh, completely impossible to reach the targets, and the little amount of food he gave them, they, they ended up uh, dying of natural causes, or they were actually murdered in the fields. These are people that worked here, you can see most of them are, some of them are teenagers up to about 20 years old, working here, but didn't actually realize what they were doing. And this man here, he was an engineer, but they didn't only kill him, they would kill his entire family as well. Even people wearing glasses were, were killed because that was a sign of being an intellectual. And this building here, this is still preserved the way it was found in 1979. This was used as uh, detention cells where they would be kept here until they were moved into the interrogation room. Well, these are some of the cells here where they would be held. Two or three people in each one here. Nice to think that this used to be a classroom. You can see receiving a shower once every three months you know, was the normal. You can see some of the rooms were just been in the way they were shackled. Okay. Interrogation rooms. You can see paintings of the interrogation techniques, including uh, here the shackles here and the board here that would be used for what's known as waterboarding, still used in the US. So religion was also banned. Uh, they didn't only kill the the uh, the monks; they also destroyed a lot of the temples. You get pictures from the killing fields and far from the capital here. I believe 1.5 to maybe 3 million people died during the Khmer regime from 75 to 79. We just finished a visit here to the S21 uh, prison here. So it, uh, I haven't filmed everywhere, but it's a bit uh, beyond belief what, what went on here in the years between 75 and 79. But, uh, during the year 75, people were pretty uh, tired of uh, being uh, bombed by USA, so his uh, party, the Khmer Rouge, gained a lot of uh, popularity. America dropped many, many bombs here in Cambodia, many more than were dropped during the Second World War. So their party quickly became very popular here. People thought that uh, the war was soon to be over and a better time was ahead, but uh, in reality, when the Americans left, uh, things took a terrible turn for the worst here, when uh, Pol Pot's regime came to power. His idea was uh, to take the country back to agriculture. So at first all of the people that were in favour of the old regime in Vietnam and USA, they were removed from the country and then he started uh, systematically uh, cleaning the country of any intellectuals, uh, any religious people, police, anybody connected in any way to the old regime, anybody who didn't believe in his way of thinking was eliminated. Between uh, 1.5 and 3 million people they believe were, were killed during those years here. This is one of the prisons where people were taken to be interrogated and uh, tortured and when they after soon that they confessed they would be, uh, they would be murdered. So uh, yeah, pretty horrific what went on here. Now we're on our way to the Royal Palace. See if it's if we have time to visit that before it closes. I think it closes at five o'clock. Running a little bit late. But, uh, let's see if it's possible. Okay, so what we're visiting now, this is the Royal the Royal Palace. Actually cycled by yesterday, if you notice that on the river there. 
Um, it was built in 1866, three years after the French took uh, control of uh, Cambodia. They took control in 1863. So we have a guide here, so he's telling us a little bit about this place. The king is still alive, even though not in power. He's living in a building just behind this one. And uh, yesterday was Independence Day. All the fireworks they were coming from uh, the field in front of uh, the palace here. So, uh, and tomorrow evening, seven o'clock, the fireworks will be uh, displayed here again tomorrow. So maybe we come and see that tomorrow evening, seven o'clock here. So let's go and have a look around here. Beautiful. That's the dancing hall. You see the colors, the yellow and the white, they symbolize Hinduism and uh, Buddhism. And, uh, Cambodia used to be a Hindu country up until the 1500s when they converted to Buddhism. of the king here he lives in the, the building there he's actually 66 years old never been married and uh, he still to this day lives on his own so uh, after the king he's actually his cousin will uh, actually take power this building here this is uh, where they used to collect uh, the elephants to transport the king we can see some of the traditional dress here King and Queen are wearing. There's a picture of the crown. There's a picture of the crown, only worn once. <laughs> this is the traditional dress of the women, a different colour for each day. If you've been invited to a royal event, you need to come in the right colour. the private temple of the king. You can see how big the Khmer Empire was during the 12th to 15th century. They also controlled a lot of Laos and also uh, Thailand. At that time was uh, part of the Khmer Empire, which is now Cambodia. Okay, this is a Buddhist tree. There used to be elephants here until 1962, because the king don't want to have the elephants here, more elephants here. During the time of the Khmer Rouge in 1975 to 1979, this place was never destroyed. The king was allowed to live here, even though they destroyed all of the uh, Buddhist monasteries around in Cambodia, but uh, not this one here. so we can see what he looks like. This is during his coronation. And this here is in the later years. 